All right. Well, good evening, everybody. It's the uh, Ripper Cast Movie Hour. That's Dustin. That's you. the sound of my throat doing something. <laughs> a throat monster. Breaking down some uh, beef jerky, I suppose, which is <laughs> what I am eating. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Love beef jerky. Well, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, for the show once again this week. You can watch and listen to it. And I cannot get this wire out of the way in a variety of ways. Um, there's YouTube for the video folks and then everyone else. There's every podcast platform you can possibly imagine. And uh, that's where we are. That's where we will be. We ain't going nowheres. Uh, yeah. So check us out somewhere. <laughs> um, Dustin, how are you? I'm good. How are you, man? I am doing great. Um, rocking yeah. and rolling. Rocking and rolling. Sweet. Cool. Um, all right. Well, let's rock and roll right into uh, into this show tonight. We got a lot a bunch of movies to talk about uh, this week, most of which Dustin has seen, but um, I yes. nevertheless uh, am totally interested. So, Dustin, I queued up the wrong review. So, why don't you <laughs> explain? Uh, have you looked at the rundown? I have. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, why don't you, son of a bitch, why don't you tell us the first film we're uh, going to talk about tonight? So we are going to talk about uh, New to Theaters, A Quiet Place, Part 2. I don't know why you came all the way up here. There's nothing left. There are people out there. People worth saving. It's a little bit from the trailer for A Quiet Place Part 2. This is in theaters. It is in theaters. Which is something we haven't said in a year and change. It's been a long time, man. Yeah. Uh, so this was supposed to come out right before... Like April every- or something No, it was, it was supposed to be March. Was it really? Oh, it wow. It was okay. like the weekend. It was like right before wow. John Krasinski had already been on SNL. Emily Blunt was on talk shows like wow. a few days before. And uh, she'd done on this whole sketch with Jimmy Kimmel and all that dumb late night stuff people do. Like, let's do a skit yeah, about yeah. it. And, and, you know, yeah, all the promotional stuff you do. And they had mm-hmm. put in all the work. I think Paramount had spent 60% wow. of their print and advertising budget. Um, already wow. yeah, it, yeah they had you know it was one of the f- the films that was most affected by the pandemic because it was just about to come out and yeah, yeah, yeah. then krasinski said nope. it's it wouldn't be right and people wouldn't be able to see it together so they postponed it and this is actually a moved up day because they're they they had moved it back uh into september i think for 2021 and then mm-hmm. then they're like nope never mind june yeah yeah. All right, Dustin. So you saw this in a theater. Is that correct? I did indeed. Wow. Uh, it's the only way to see it right now. That's right. Um, that's true. And uh, yeah, man, it was. So let me tell you a little bit about my my first theater going experience in over a year. Um, so first of all, I walked in, you know, I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm in a theater. This is awesome. And was loving every second of it. Um, the smell of the popcorn and the everything was great. Like the theater was clean, like they had actually spent time uh, cleaning it because what else are they doing for a year? If you give people a year, they will maintain the theater properly. They will maintain the theater. Um, Unfortunately, the projection was not great. Um, I thought, so my, the visual experience was subpar. It was out of focus and looked dark and... uh, the colors were off. So specifically I noticed the greens and like the purple, like magenta were were like popping like crazy. And almost every character had an outline uh, of like green or purple. This was not in the film because it was in all the trailers too. And, um, and I hated it. Um, my, I went with my brother actually, um, and his wife went with me and, and, uh, they, 
he noticed it. She didn't notice it, but he noticed it. And, um, and so I was like, yeah. So as we were leaving, I looked up in the projection booth and what I believe happened was they were using a 3d lens to project a 2d image, which whenever you change from a 3d house to a 2d house, you are supposed to change those lenses. Um, and I guess they just got lazy and decided they weren't going to do that. So I'm pretty sure what happened was they were projecting a, a 2d film, with a 3d lens. Um, and so it, it gave this weird distortion. Things were out of focus. There's one shot in particular in the film where, well, there were two, two instances the, they were both early on because eventually you get caught up in the story and, and this kind of filters itself out, but, um, in your, in your brain, but early on in the film, there's like a shot of some cornfields. You couldn't make out any detail. It was just kind of like a smearing of color. And then, uh, and then there's a shot uh, in the in like the opening scene where you see a television and clearly I'm supposed to be able to see what's on the TV, but it's too out of focus. I can't tell. Um, and I don't think that was John Krasinski being like, no, nah, it's going to be out of focus. I think it was me like like my theater not projecting it properly. So uh, so all in all, uh, disappointed. But um I, I guess one of the reasons that John Krasinski decided to hold this film for theaters is the sound, the sound mix, right? Like at home, if you're just using your Samsung TV with the built-in speakers, um, you may not get the full experience that he intended. And for such a sound based and sound heavy film, um, you know, it makes sense to, to see this on the big screen. And in that regard, it sounded great. Um, so, so I got to give it props there, but the same, uh, sound team as the first movie, I think actually, yeah, you sought yeah. them out specifically. Yeah, which is awesome. And, um, and there's some really effective usage of, uh, sound dampening what that's what i'm going to call it um where where we're getting you know a a pov of um his daughter's uh like world um so Millicent simmons character um like the way she might hear things um and and so it's really effective but uh the plot um so this picks up right after the first film um and um and and yeah i mean i i can't really even go into it too much without telling you what the family's going to do, which I almost feel like is a spoiler. I'm sure it's in the trailer, but like, I didn't watch the trailers or anything. Um, so, so, uh, so I'll just say this, the family is moving on from the events of the first film and deciding to, um, use what they have now learned about, you know, how to destroy one of these creatures, uh, and potentially pass that information along. Um, the ins and outs of that, I won't spoil, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's the general premise. Um, the cast, it's all returning from the first film, Emily Blunt, of course, um, Millicent Simmons, as I mentioned, um, John Krasinski gets a great, like little, like flashback scene, um, Noah Jupe, um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, there's, there's some good performances here for sure. Um, the standout to me is Killian Murphy, which I'm like, why is this guy not in every movie ever made? He's so good, man. K- Killian and, Murphy is a gem. He's been good for 20 years and he's just sort of had so moderate reliable. success. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's just so reliable. He's just someone you should always cast in whatever you're yes. doing. That guy could do a romantic, he wouldn't want to, but he could do a romantic comedy. He's yeah. He's a good looking guy, but man, I remember when I first saw him in Red Eye with Rachel McAdams, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that dude was scary and he was scary just, just looking like a regular person because he has yeah, yeah, yeah. got those icy blue eyes mm-hmm. and uh, he just looks so, so menacing. Which it, it, it's, um, it's interesting because you, you'd normally see him as like a character actor and, and I guess he probably is, mm-hmm. but like he's leading man material also, yeah. like if you see like 28 days later, yep. that's the first thing I saw him in. Fantastic. Um, and then of course, Batman Begins and, and the Dark Knight films. Yeah. Inception. Uh, which in- interestingly enough, uh, he auditioned originally for Batman and then came back for Scarecrow. Wow. Um, but, um, but yeah, so, and you can actually YouTube, uh, his audition for Batman and he's in the costume and everything. It's really oh, great. Wow. Um, and I can't remember. I think it was like Val Kilmer's costume that they used for that. I can't remember. Seriously? But yeah. Regardless, it's it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> and um, and it's just like his eyes behind the bat suit like cowl. Um, so anyway, but enough about other movies. Um, so um, yeah, it, it's just a, it's a it's it's a well performed film. Um, John Krasinski is writer and director here, um, and he is knocking it out of the park. Um, so I gave this four stars. I don't remember what I gave the first one. Um, yeah. I remember being. Like I liked it, but I did not love it. I just okay. liked it. Yeah. Um, th- this film like invested the entire time. I wow. loved the heck out of this film. I don't know why I even gave it five st- or four stars instead of like five. Um, I can't really pick on anything. It felt like it was short. Like it probably could have used a little more um, padding out and like, um, some, a uh, few areas and, um, and it kind of feels a little bit like they're, they're baiting us for a third film. Um, and, uh, and, and that sort of thing. But, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really solid film. I'll stick with my four stars, but not for any big reason. Um, it just feels more like a four star film to me. Um, it is, I, I'm, I'm totally invested in these characters. Um, what I wrote on Letterboxd was just, this is one of the rare modern horror thrillers Mm -hmm. that you actually care more about the characters than you do about the monsters. Um, and, and like these characters, as they go about their world, um, I'm invested every second of the way. And what, um, and, and I I may draw a few comparisons between this and the films we're going to talk about later on, but, but what makes this so successful in terms of being suspenseful and, and, uh, I would say scary, um, is, is how real the danger is even in this weird sci-fi world. Um, so yes, there is a danger in the monsters, but what John Krasinski does that's, that's so smart is he uses real world things to scare you. So, um, without spoiling anything, um, what I will say is there's a moment here, um, as you know, from the last film, they do have a baby. Um, and so there's some drama, some suspense that happens with that baby. And, and this is not, the baby is not a monster. The baby's a baby. But, but the sheer, like, the, just the idea that there's a baby in this world is horrific. Yeah. And, and, and so the, the drama, the suspense, the, the thrill you get from watching that happen, um, around a baby is so intense. And it reminds me of Alfred Hitchcock, who, let's not forget, the master of suspense. Mm-hmm. He knew how to build suspense in a way that didn't make you feel like he was wasting your time, right? Like there's a way to build suspense that's just like, I'm going to linger, like the camera's going to linger. But then it's like, but you're just wasting time at this point. Sure. But th- then there's a way to, within the context of the story, heighten the stakes. That's what the difference is. We're not like true suspense is the stakes getting higher and higher and higher and higher to a point where you feel like, Either you just need a just need the release or you are like you, you you don't you genuinely don't know what's going to happen and the worst could happen. Yeah. Um, like that's what suspense is. Suspense isn't. And I, OK, I'll go ahead and pick on The Conjuring. Um, suspense isn't walking through a hallway very slowly. Mm-hmm. That's not suspense because the stakes aren't increasing as you take a step. Right. You're getting closer to potential danger, but the danger isn't increasing. The danger was the same a step ago. Um, so that's that's the difference, I think, in building suspense is that that it, it ramps up the sense of danger. Yeah. And, and John Krasinski does that brilliantly here um, within the story. And then it's performed brilliantly by the actors. Um, so what they really did here was give Millicent Simmons um, and Noah Jupe a chance to shine. Um, and, and man, they both knock it out of the park. First of all, Millicent Simmons is fantastic in this role. And secondly, Noah Jupe is fantastic in every role I've seen him in. Yeah. He's um, great. He's so good and yeah. he and he acts circles around some of the other actors in this film. Wow. And and it's so effortless in a way that look, I, I know what I'm about to say and the irony of it, but it's like a young Shia LaBeouf. 
Right. He, yeah. he, he is able to perform in an authentic way that feels natural yeah. and, and, and immediately wins you over. Yeah. And that, and, and, and that's just a gift. I think, um, it's not something that's taught. That's no, a gift. No, that's a um, gift you nurture. Exactly. Um, and then of course, you know, if, if we're talking about performances, Killian Murphy and Emily Blunt, like I said, they're always fantastic. Yeah. And so you're, you're immediately bought into all of these characters because you love all of these actors yeah. and all of these actors, like, here's the thing. And I, I heard John Krasinski talk about this and, and, um, I think this is what makes this a great film. He was talking about a, a conversation he had a long time ago with Greg Daniels when he was on The Office. Yeah. And he was talking about like a worry of his was being funny. I, I, I got to make sure I'm being funny. Right. And Greg Daniels says, no, no, no. You need to tell an authentic story. Yeah. And if the audience thinks it's funny, then it's funny. Yeah. But you don't try to be funny. You sell the moment. And and so he, what John Krasinski said was, I approached A Quiet Place that way. We're not making a horror movie. We're just making a movie. And yeah. if it scares you, that's that's on you. That's yeah. the audience. Um, and 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 so that's what all of these actors bring to it. Is none of them are trying to be like. I'm telling a ghost story. They're all yeah. giving a performance. Yeah, your your job as an actor is to tell the truth. You mm -hmm. know, your your is is to reflect an honest, an honest performance. Uh, yeah, whether it's the whole acting is reacting thing or, or an actor giving a monologue. You know, your your job is to is to be authentic uh, or to yes. portray authenticity uh, to whatever yes. emotion the director needs you to get. So yeah, in horror, it's not just, let's make sure that my perform my, I just, my scream is a scary scream. It's no, yeah. it's going to be an honest scream. You know, right. that sort of thing. Right. Or I have to do something creepy now. Right. It's, it, it's, it's supposed to be, let me just do what's authentic and what's real and sell a story to yeah. the audience. Yeah. And, and that's why I care about these characters because they're all playing this like it's a drama, like it's a, it's an Oscar level drama. And, and, and the truth is it's just a silly horror movie, but, but whether it's suspenseful, whether it's scary, of course, John Krasinski has skill that he deploys to persuade you that this is scary um but you're just telling a story yeah and so and so that's what i love about it um so many horror movies these days are just a ghost story told around a campfire and and all that is is and then he walked down the hallway yeah. you know and and but there's no substance to that the the substance is oh but but then our lead character who's deaf loses her cochlear implant Oh, okay. And that's so much more effective. Yeah. Right. Um, and, 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 and in fact, they're not even telling it the way that I just told it. It's yeah. just, and then she loses just her happens. implant. Right? Yeah. And, and it's like, oh snap, like, yep. yo, I'm invested. And so that's, that's what makes this, what makes this film and, and honestly, what makes this franchise so, um, so unique amongst all of the you know horror thriller landscape yeah. um so so big 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 praise to john krasinski he made a great film here um i i i want to go back and rewatch the first one because i hesitate to say i like this one better sure but i'll say this walking out of the theater i was more excited having seen this one than the first one. Um, so, so I, I need to go rewatch that first one. Cause I feel like maybe I was just in a weird space when I saw it, um, because I just Could remember be. being lukewarm on it, but, um, but yeah, I, I really like this film. So, so my recommendation is if you can get out to a theater, this is a great welcome back to the theater yeah. film. Um, and, uh, Maybe that's because it was almost a goodbye theater film. Right. It, it, it is a great welcome yeah. back to the theater film. And it is great to see with an audience that that genuinely wants to be there. Because I feel like we're at a point where the audience in movies, like they're they're not just like there to kill time. Like these are yeah. the people that want to be in the at the theater right now. Yeah. So now's a good time. That's one of the things the pandemic probably shook out as well was you know yeah. was uh who really wants to be here and who doesn't yeah yeah you know yeah. one of the positive effects of it like you know people reshuffle their priorities like do i really like going to the movies or, or am i just bored do i just need to get out of the house right you know and, and you know you want those people at the movies too you want their dollars but at the end of the day as a patron you want to be around other people who want to see movies as much as you do yep and 
I gave the first Quiet Place five stars. I loved mm. it. Um, yeah. Because I saw it. When did it come out? 2018? Yeah, 2018. 18, yeah. So I, you know, I, I had only two kids at that point. And so like, but, but the, the motif of, of parenthood and, you know, family, you know, was especially resonant for me just in general. So I, I responded sure. really well to it. Yeah. Kind of, especially after other f- films that kind of had an effect on me, like Logan, like you had to have a film like this come out the following year was just another one of those like, man, that just, that, that hit in a really good, a good time for me. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, so it sounds like based on, based on that, I'm, I'm in for a, a treat. Yep. Um, yep, for sure. So a third installment is currently in development is what I'm reading and a spinoff. Okay. Well, I guess I'll explore that when I know more. Um, yep. so yeah. And then, so this is in theaters right now, but although it will be available to stream on Paramount plus 45 days after the theatrical debut, mm-hmm. which, uh, is, is this article I have next here after, after the film. So this is yep. on deadline, although you could find that blurb anywhere, I suppose, but, um, Paramount plus is adding like a bunch of movies to its platform. Mm-hmm. Um, including a quiet place too. Um, and they, because they have a new ad supported tier, let's say it's four ninety nine a month, I think. Yeah. Um, the essential plan with the all new ad supported tier continue combines marquee sports, including NFL games and more than 1600 soccer matches a year with mm-hmm. on-demand entertainment options, including current and upcoming TV shows and movies, as well as breaking news through CBSN. The previously offered limited commercial plan will no longer be available for new users, but existing users will users will maintain maintain access. So whatever the previous plan was, if you had it, your grandfather didn't unless you cancel and try to reapply. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a premium plan for nine ninety nine, four K downloadable, um, a, a bit more content, but most people are probably can hit four ninety nine. So if you want to watch a Quiet Place two. Seems like you and probably me, your next best chance to see this movie, if you're not going to go to the theaters, is to get Paramount Plus. Um, and it's got a lot of stuff. I mean, it, Paramount Plus absorbed CBS All Access. So mm-hmm. all those you know, Star Trek shows and a um, bunch of other stuff and all the Nickelodeon stuff. This is all on Paramount Plus. So, yep. um, yeah, let's keep going to the break. And when we get back, we'll talk about some movies that are frightening at some news that is frightening and uh, a, a human being who is frightening. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I didn't even write that, Dustin. That was awesome. Back in a moment on the Hoopercast Movie Hour. Back on the Hoopercast Movie Hour. So, stuff recommended this for you this weekend. I realized that um, what I'm essentially doing every week is recommending stuff, uh, not telling you what's on streaming, but what I would watch on streaming if, mm-hmm. if possibly I were you. So, let's pretend I'm you. Um, on Netflix, um, in the next week, June 17th, uh, we got Silver Linings Playbook popping up on Netflix. I think that's a good mm-hmm. film. Yeah. Uh, even if the director's not a great dude, it's a great film, right, right. great yep. actors. Yep. Uh, Hulu, I have no recommendations. Um, same thing with Amazon. Disney Plus, we've got Loki available now. Episode one streaming now. So that'll be exciting, is exciting perhaps. Um, mm-hmm. So HBO Max, uh, new this weekend, uh, we got In the Heights, which is uh, an adaptation of the of a Lin-Manuel Miranda musical, uh, the other one. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, if you, you know, if you never got, if you never saw the 40 year old virgin, that is also popping on HBO max on June 12th. Yep. Um, speaking of the office and Steve Carell, sort of, yep. I suppose, sure. earlier, <laughs> there you go. um, as for the things that are uh, frightening to me, um, people that are frightening to me, we've got Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> oh. Um, we got the story in variety. There's a movie called She Said that's coming out. It's gonna, that's going to be made, and it's going to star Carrie Mulligan and Zoe Kazan as the reporters from the New York Times who who wrote the who well who who broke the story, who wrote the big report, the investigation yeah. into the sexual harassment um, 
allegations and investigations into Harvey Weinstein, um, formerly of the <laughs> formerly of the former Weinstein Company. Um, yeah, Mulligan and Kazan are in final negotiations with Universal in a movie to play Megan Twoley and Jody Cantor, the authors of the book. She said, "Breaking the sexual harassment story that helped ignite a movement." So, there's not much else to say here except for the producers. Sorry, one of the, the it's a it's a co it's a um, co production deal with Universal with um, Plan B Entertainment. So Brad Pitt and Annapurna Pictures, Megan Ellison. Um, mm-hmm. Annapurna is a cool production uh, yeah. company, and Megan Ellison's name is a big deal to me, at least on movies yeah. like this. So, um, I um, and and I love Carrie Mulligan, and I love Zoe Kazan, and uh, what's cool about this story is that it's original, although not like not the first of its kind, sadly. Um, but it's original, based on a book. Um, relevant recent um and it has broad appeal it's not just oh it's a cool hollywood investigation story people would watch that and the first thing that came to mind for me was a movie like spotlight which i love i love spotlight i think it's an amazing film yeah Uh, another film that hit at a specific time for me that was very impactful and Mm -hmm. I, not to say that, oh, I think this will be as good as Spotlight, but it, that's the first thing it calls to mind is, is something that really happened that as it's happening, it's almost like, oh my God, like I believe it, but I didn't realize how how widespread this problem was. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. There's no director or anything attached yet. Um, I'm curious, I guess, next who's going to direct it, but I'm excited for the project. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So uh, let's see what what else we got here after that. So we've got uh, some casting news here. We got Christina Ricci joining the Matrix Four, which that was just announced in an updated uh, Warner Brothers press kit. For are you excited for Matrix Four? I'm not excited, but I'm going to re up my subscription for December in order to watch it. I'm curious. Um, okay. I mean, it seems like everybody's involved, so I want to see what the big. I want to see what they do. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely curious. Sure. I love Christina Ricci. Um, of course, Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss are back. Jay Pinkett Smith is back. A few other people that you don't recognize probably by name. We've also got. I, so I didn't realize the other casting choices that were already in this film as well. So we've got um priyana chopra for uh, quantico i think is what people might know her from mm-hmm. we've got jessica henwick people would know her if they sadly watched the iron fist but she's great mm-hmm. um we've got yaya abdul mateen the second people would might know him how uh, there was a really good episode of black mirror with anthony mackie that he was in but um uh, oh he's he's uh, he's black manta in um in uh uh, uh aquaman and he's in Watchmen. And he's in Watchmen. Uh, so he's great. And we've got... here's So I, I can't really guess who everybody's casting, but I think I know these next two actors. We've got Neil Patrick Harris and Jonathan Groff. I'm mm-hmm. relatively certain they're going to be playing some sort of agent. Sure. I don't see them <laughs> playing yeah. people from yeah. Zion <laughs> the way right, that those right, two right. look if they put on a suit. So... Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I wouldn't say I'm excited, but I'm I'm going to watch it. I'm, I'll, I'll be there to check it out for sure. Sure. Um, last piece of thing, the last piece of news we have here is, um, more Zack Snyder stuff somehow making it into our show. Um, and this is really just a, a strange, I don't know. I want to see what you thought of this, but Zack Snyder apparently is opening to directing a Dragon Ball Z movie or an anime film. Apparently he's a big fan of anime, he likes to show it to his kids. Um, and, uh, someone asked him, would you direct, uh, Dragon Ball Z? And he was like, yeah, I'd consider it if it. If the project came right, that's what he says, how he chose to word it. Stop this. Um, He's so eloquent. So (laughs) um, what do you think of of that? What do you think hearing that? All right. So first of all, anytime somebody (laughs) says, hey, would you ever do uh, this kind of movie? The smart answer is to always say, yeah, sure. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah, I'd be open to it if it was right. It yeah. doesn't mean anything. It just means like, I'm not going to turn down a multi-million dollar deal if, yeah. that's, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, so so sure. I don't know. If, if Paramount says, hey, we'll give you $50 million to make this movie. Sure. You want to okay. do you want to do a movie about love story with Satan? Yeah. I mean, sure. yeah. It's been the thread script it came along. Yeah, what's it pay? <laughs> 
is, is, is how, Satan, how's craft service looking? Is Satan ripped? <laughs> right. Where's he bench? <laughs> if Satan can bench 400 pounds, I'm in. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So, so first, first thing, uh, are you interested in doing this? That's true. Yeah, sure. Well, that hey, means nothing. Hey, director who works movie to movie, would you like to potentially work on a movie? Uh, sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, That's, great. It means nothing. Yeah. Um, now, had he offered that information, like, sure. oh man, you know what I would love to do yeah. is a Dragon Ball Z movie. Yeah, real dream of then, mine. Yeah. Now we're cooking. Now we're talking about something. <laughs> yeah. But 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 before that, we're not talking about anything. No. Um, now I will say, <laughs> Zack Snyder directing an anime film, potentially Dragon Ball Z. Uh, Look, his style certainly fits the bill. Yeah. Um, for like a very stylized visual, uh, like heightened, uh, I don't know, whatever. But, but I don't know. Have we not learned our lesson about making live action Dragon Ball movies? I know. See, Is, I feel like if he were to do it, you know what I really liked that no one ever talks about. What's that? I like The Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul. Oh yeah, I never I, saw that. I like that film. It's gorgeous. Sure. You know, sure. it's 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 great for kids, you know, unlike his other films, like all of his right, other right, films, right. every right. single other film he's ever made. Yes. Um and so I think if you want to make a you know, I don't know if you can do a full-blown 2D 3D animated film, but he ought to do not all the time, but like he every once every 10 years do an animated uh, do an animated film or a CG yeah. or CG you know fully computer animated film but cuz his style sure. certainly suited to it and you can take a break from working with those pesky actors yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and and just have full control over the over the image i don't know like i said yeah. last last week he's or whatever that was he's he's kind of a camera nerd so i can imagine that he yeah. might not be interested in just sitting and watching people animate stuff while he tells them what to do yeah. But you know, shoot it like uh like John Favreau, do it in a visual effects volume, like like yeah, Lion yeah, yeah. King. You can do that now. So yep. you can still yep. film, there's still a tactile nature to it. So yep. get, get get on the horn of you know Disney or ILM or whoever has a visual effects volume. Probably everybody, I'm sure of Jeff Bezos, he probably has one, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. And then part of me, especially with Dragon Ball Z, I'm like, is there is there a big market for a Dragon Ball Z movie beyond the Dragon Ball Z movies that actually exist? I don't think like, so. Like, uh, the fans are getting Dragon Ball Z movies. Yes. It's not like there are and no Dragon Ball them. Z movies. The first and enjoying them. person I thought of when I read this was John. Would right, John want exactly. to see a Zack Snyder Dragon Ball Z? John would not. <laughs> <laughs> he he would watch it, but he would, he would not it. be happy yeah. about it. <laughs> We'd be talking and, about it on this show. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, but but it's it's so weird because there's a current film franchise happening with mm -hmm. this thing. So the only reason to do like a Hollywood version would be to pull in new fans. But if you do if you're doing it to pull in new fans, then mm -hmm. What you're saying is like what what works about the franchise for the fans would not work for new people who aren't fans. Mm -hmm. So now we're in the territory of like now we need to change things. Yeah. But then you alienate the fans in order to get the new people. And then it's not even Dragon Ball Z anymore. So no. it's kind of like this thing. And like I don't even really care much for dragon ball z like i've seen bits and pieces what what we watched in college yeah together yeah that's what i've seen yeah. and um and 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 it's fine uh i have nothing against it but i just haven't watched it mm -hmm. and uh but but i'm thinking about so i'm thinking about myself would i be more likely to watch a Zack snyder dragon ball z movie um uh, if only out of morbid curiosity sure that would be the only reason that i would yeah but but as it is, I have not gone to the well of Dragon Ball Z movies. So if he made a super strict like this is a Dragon Ball Z movie, I wouldn't I wouldn't watch it either. Yeah. Um, so but if he, you know, made it like, hey, Henry Cavill's in this, then I would be like, uh, OK, I'll see. I'll see what it is, I guess. <laughs> but I don't I don't. Yeah, I don't care. No, nah, it's not going to pull me in. So, you know, and what, I saw uh... Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> Yeah, I never had to do that. I I was the DD that night. Oh wow! 
If that's one, why I went. There's one they, night I would have, I would have, I would have insisted you consume alcohol, Dustin. It would have been that night. <laughs> you, you didn't go, you didn't go with us. I don't think. No, uh, I didn't. But, but Kellen and John and I was Luke and so I. So sorry to miss it. They, they bought my ticket <laughs> so that <laughs> so I, so that, so that I could drive. That was the whole thing. So it's I paid nothing for that still, movie. I'm very except, proud of that. Except fact. two hours of your life, your precious yeah, but youth. I, but I did have to sit there completely sober and <laughs> yeah. watch, watch this abomination of a movie and I, again I'm not even a fan it's just sure. a bad movie I, I, I consider watching it if I can chew some cot during it <laughs> right right <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just looking at it going I don't know anything about Dragon Ball but I'm pretty sure the dude's not in high school yeah you're this like this Goku dude is not in high you're school you're watching it like I don't know anything about this canon but I can tell this is a bad film yeah, I can tell this is not canon. <laughs> it's one of those things I've seen so much online discussion and video essays about that I've essentially I have the, I've got the gist of it, and what I've yeah. seen is just just awful, just terrible. Yes, it is terrible. <laughs> you know what would be terrible uh, if there was a haunting in uh, your house or place of residence, and you know what film and series talks about that, Dustin? Uh, the Conjuring. What are you guys? Well, we've been called ghost hunters, paranormal researchers. But we prefer to be known simply as Ed and Lorraine Warren. You're picking up anything in here, hon? Something awful happened here, Ed. What is it? Whatever Lorraine sees, feels, touches, it takes a toll on her. A little piece each time. You have a lot of spirits in here. But there's one that I'm most worried about because it is so hateful. That's a little bit. From the trailer for The Conjuring. This film, this film came out in 2014. And I remember that because when I saw it, I was in my apartment. And that's same. I remember a lot of 2014 films because I was living in at Lennox Gates in Mobile. And uh, ah. so that's where I saw Guardians of the Galaxy. It's where I saw Frozen. Uh, that's where I saw The Conjuring. And it's the only film of this series that I have seen. But it was not recently, Dustin, unlike your experience uh, um, with this film in this series. So, but uh, yeah, so I, I can speak fairly enough to this film. But as we yeah. go on, I, I know less and less things. So, got it. Uh, did you watch this on HBO Max? I did, yes. Okay. They are all on HBO Max now. Yes. Um, so and second uh, one, well, I guess the third one technically is the most recent, but the second one right. just came on a few days yep. before it. Yep, exactly. It was over on Netflix, so you were going to have to like you know jump streaming platforms, mm -hmm. but they're they're all at home on HBO Max now. Yep. Um, so The Conjuring um, is I gave I gave it three stars. I thought it was fine. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I was expecting, um, but but I guess I I guess I got what I expected. Like I, I guess I was just like, oh, I'm sure. That's that's exactly what a conjuring movie would be. Mm -hmm. Um and and so, you know, yeah, you get the Ed and Lorraine Warren thing with Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga. They're great. Um, they're great in these roles. Um, I enjoy their chemistry. I enjoy their, you know, relationship. I, I enjoy them. Um, Lily Taylor is in this film. Um, she's great. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's just it's one of those. One of those haunting movies, uh, a demon and there's things and whatever. And, uh, you know, it's just that kind of thing. And, uh, look, like, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm one of those people and this is, this is going to be a common criticism throughout the, the next, this review and the next two. Uh, I don't, I don't think it's scary when a dude levitates. And I don't think it's scary if a chair is upside down. And I don't think it's scary if someone falls downstairs. Uh, I, I don't think that that's scary. Um, even even if it even if it's very quiet and then very loud suddenly, it's still not scary. I I I I, I don't think that's scary. Um, so so immediately I'm I'm turned off by this film, if only because I'm like I thought this was a scary movie. I'm not scared. Um, like. And especially because it's so formulaic, like, sure. I don't know if you, if you want to say this is like James Wan's, uh, uh, weakness or whatever, but he telegraphs the scares, mm. um, yeah. meaning like, 
okay, the camera is like f- following someone down the hallway and you see the opening of the hallway on the other end, mm-hmm. but then suddenly it goes at, it, like it's mysteriously blocked by the, our main character. Yeah. And then the camera starts to come back and reveal that opening again. Mm-hmm. And there's something scary in the opening. And it's like, yeah, I saw that coming. Like there's something scary in the opening. You, yeah. you covered the opening for 0.2 seconds and then you revealed the opening. <laughs> of course, there's some scary there. Yeah. Like, this is not this is not rocket science or hey there's something spooky here there's let me look through this hole and it very slowly look, look in this little hole right here and then Stop there's it, like Dustin. and there's, and there's like an out. eye looking back yeah and it's like oh oh no an yeah. eye looking back through a hole i've never been th- this is commonplace have sure. you ever seen a peephole in an apartment building like this is a scary yeah, a public um, restroom <laughs> I hope no one's staring through a hole in a public restroom, but okay. <laughs> you ever tried, to, you ever tried to poop in? at a Marta station? <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. I have because, not and I will not. Because there are not stalls in those. You know how I know that, Dustin? <laughs> I do not. It looks like a big, long prison cell with Ugh. no stall and the lock doesn't work. And John did not do a good job of making sure no one walked in while I was pooping. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all thought I was making this shit up. This just happened to me. Oh my god! <laughs> See, is, that's scary. This is real life. Um, yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Granny, don't." <laughs> no. Um, but but yeah, man. Like, uh, I, I didn't I didn't think this was as scary as it had been hyped up to me. Sure. Um, it's not like it is. It, it just wasn't that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's exactly what I thought it was, which is it's going to be. A little bit formulaic. It's going to, you know, whatever. But, but, you know, I, I guess, I guess the appeal here is that it treats the, the, the monsters, the demons, the ghouls, whatever, uh, as real, right? Like our characters believe Ed and Lorraine Warren believe that that's real and the film treats it like it's real. Um, yeah. I guess that's I guess that's like a plus, right? Like, because I guess in most movies, it's just like, what is this crazy thing happening? And Ed and Lorraine Warren are like, yo, this is a demon, and this, these are the rules of the demons, and this is what happens. Yeah, this is how they operate. This is where it comes from in scripture, and like blah blah blah. And so in in that in in that regard, I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's the series like uniqueness like yeah. that's that's what's kind of cool and the fact that these are like based on true stories um for whatever that means and um so you know that's the that's the series uniqueness um but but having watched the first one um I guess I should go ahead and tell you why I watched the first one because I knew the third one was coming out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I need to watch these movies. I've never seen any of them. I only watched these three. I did not watch any of the spinoffs. Um, and so, um, so yeah, after having watched the first one, I wasn't convinced to quit. Like I didn't, I didn't feel the need to like, ah, oh, there's nothing here. Sure. But, but it's, it wasn't like, oh, this is a revelation. So, right. uh, so that's, that's the conjuring. It's fine. Dead center, three stars. All right. With that, the next film in this series is The Conjuring 2. This is my home. Get out now. No, this is not your house. Now, what's your name? My name is Bill Wilkins, and I'm 72 years old. The voice on this tape is coming from an 11-year-old girl. An oppressing spirit will try to force you to commit the ultimate sin. And what's that? Murder? Suicide? Or both? That's <laughs> that's the bit from the trailer of The Conjuring 2, also directed by James Wan. And it's weird because you're talking about the how Ed and Lorraine Warren um you know they they believe this this stuff the, the film approaches it as if the demons are real and um which is a belief held by many people, but it's so funny where it's like, you know, it's, they don't say based on a true story, but they say like based from the files of Ed and Lorraine Warren, right? It's like based on the files of two people who have been sued a, a lot of times by a lot of people <laughs> claiming that everything they, they said happened, never happened. Yep. So, right. uh, yeah, take, take the, uh, take all the, uh, accolades with a grain of salt. Yeah, man. So the conjuring to, um, out of the gate, 
also gave it three stars. Um, middle of the road. I will say it's it's better than the fir- the first one. Um, I, I I liked it better than the first one. Not enough. It, like initially, I was like, okay, so it's three and a half then. Mm-hmm. And I get, I guess, sure. But uh, but I'm just gonna stick with three. I mean, it's it's still middle of the road. It, it, there's nothing here that. Uh, that makes me feel like, oh, now they found it. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, nothing that makes me feel like, oh, they have nothing here. Um, and um, so in in this film, Ed and Lorraine Warren go to London. And uh, so this is the British, the British one. And they, <laughs> um, they, they have a family there that is uh, being haunted. And so they, uh, you know, work to save them what's weird about these films is that like ed and lorraine warren are almost like the secondary protagonists in their own films yeah it's like it's like the the formula is we have we start with ed and lorraine warren working their previous case right and then like you know it's like a james bond movie like here's the end of the last mission right and then and then they then it's like, oh, now here's like a touching scene of them at home. Blah, blah, blah. Let's reinforce their relationship. And then it's like, now we're going to get to know these the family that's being haunted. Right. And, and we're going to spend a lot of time with them and get to know like what's haunting them, what's going on before – they call Ed and Lorraine Warren. And right. They almost like come in in like the second act and like we'll come, we'll come into them every so often. Like cut back to them and just see what they're up to, yeah. but they don't. They don't gen- generally have a whole lot to do until that moment when those two stories intersect. Yeah. Um, again, then the formula goes. They work on the case, and then it ends with a touching moment between Ed and Lorraine Warren. Like that's the that's the that's the plot, and it's weird because they're secondary protagonists in their own thing because the inciting incident does not happen to them. Um, yeah. and the thrust of the story does not happen to them. They, they are brought in, uh, to help another protagonist with their goal, which is to rid the house of the spirit or whatever. And Ed and Lorraine Warren are, are a tool to do that. There like are means st- to an end. Structurally, it's like a detective novel, you know, yes. it's like, yeah, yeah I'm going to come in and work this case, you know, and stuff's going to yep. develop with me, but you're right. The inciting incident does not happen. Or, or the beginning of like an episode of CSI, like, oh, yeah. we're here. Here's a jogger. Oh, he found a dead body. And the next scene, oh, now we're in the lab. Hey, we found the body. Let's go check it out. Exactly. You know? It's just like in an episode of CSI, you've got 40 minutes. This you have two two hours and 15 minutes. So oh. you can spend a lot of time yeah. with that other family, right? Yeah. A lot of time with your actual protagonists. Um, but, uh, you know, having said that, I still enjoy Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga. And of course, they still get top billing because they are, I guess, probably the most important people here. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, again, a lot of really good performances all around here. Um, um, I like. I, I feel like this family is more memorable to me. Um, the setting is more memorable to me. Um, maybe it's just because it's in London. It just feels different. Yeah, it's creepy. Um, yeah, it's yeah, foggy. And it, yeah, exactly. Um, so, so I, I enjoyed it better. I think James Wan has a better handle of how he wants to film this, and you get a lot of those like Wanisms where <laughs> you're going to see like long takes. Yeah. where cameras go through objects and like really super wide angle shots and um yeah like cameras like going through a window right like right. that sort of thing and um you know um it, 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 this is like full James Wan on display and and I think he really cuts loose with Aquaman but like this is this is full James Wan right here yeah and um and again it, it, like it or hate it um, and I love some of what he does, but he still telegraphs those scares. And so what you have is, again, this is like in, in regards to my comparison with A Quiet Place, you have a lot of wasted time. That's what I'm going to call these films is like waste, The Conjuring 2, colon, wasting time. <laughs> Because because it's two hours and 15 minutes, and I bet if you cut down all the moments where they're just walking around or the camera is just floating around, mm-hmm. you, you've got like a 30-minute movie here. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's literally just like, hey, how do we build tension? I don't know. They walk upstairs slow. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ah, nothing's happening here. They're just walking <laughs> slow, like, and getting closer to the noise that's getting louder. It doesn't – there's – that doesn't – 
Anyway, um, so, so yeah, and, and look, I'm not a horror movie fan. Like, this isn't my genre. Sure. So I'm not going to like claim, like, here's how you do it. But what I'm going to say is, for me, this doesn't work. This style of building tension is let's just take our time in revealing what's knocking on the wall. Mm -hmm. But, but I'm not more tense after 60 seconds of that than I was. At the beginning. And that that to me is a failure. Did you ever see you saw the Baba Duke, right? I did. And you thought Great that was a movie. Yeah. So that yeah. So we're on the same page. Like something like the Baba Duck that 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 um is more subtle or it either or it relies more or it, or it ditches audio and goes with visual to be mm-hmm. unsettling or vice versa, or just human human elements of horror. Yeah. Um things that are scary even outside a horror film, like mother yelling at her child, like screaming yeah. at her child. That's, you know, stuff like that. Like that's, yeah. that tends to have a greater effect. And, um, films like the conjuring and conjuring Two, probably, and stuff like that, they do, they, 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 they do scare me because I'm, I guess I'm an easily frightened person, but, but what they don't come away with is I don't come away respecting the film. It's just like, Oh, you know, hearing bang on the walls and hearing getting closer and closer. Okay. That, that freaks me out. Cause all I think about is if, if, that, if I was at home and that was me, that would freak me out. You know, like sure. I know that right now I'm in a theater watching a movie and so like I'm safe, you know, so I have, I don't, I don't have, I don't cross over like that, but I do yeah. think, okay, this is, this is scary. This would scare me. But later when I'm analyzing, it, I'm going, but like, that's not the same as being effective, you know? Well, let, let me, let me compare it to something. And this is, this is not, this is just me like putting on my writer's cap. Mm-hmm. It, compare this to writing something like a quiet place. The, the, the great thing about a quiet place is you have very well-defined rules. Don't make noise. Yeah. And so what that does is if you have the monster like in front of our character and the character is like holding their breath mm-hmm. because the monster's right there. Um, and, and, and the monster does not see them or doesn't know that they're there because they're not making noise. And right behind them is a Jack in the box <laughs> and the characters backing up slowly. Yeah. And we see that Jack in the box in the foreground and the foot coming closer and closer to it. Tension is now building yeah. because I know when that foot touches that Jack in the box and it goes, I know that that means death is imminent. Yeah. Right. And so, so what's happening is the tension is building even in nothing really happening because the foot is getting closer. But when a character is just walking up steps, nothing is, is, is becoming uh, more heightened. And so what you might do is the, the old home alone trick Mm -hmm. where up there's a, there's a nail on the next step. And are they going to notice the nail or, or do uh, there's a, there's a, uh, like a, a skate on the next step and will they step on the skate and slip down the stairs? It's, it's goofy and whatever. But, um, but what I'm saying is like, we know with the next, the very next step, something could happen. That's going to change the game. Right. And, and like, this is, this is how you build tension. It's not just walking up steps because there's nothing other than the character getting closer to the monster. Potentially there's nothing scarier about the fifth step than the first step. Um, so that's where you have in those five steps, you have, you have to heighten the stakes. And so what you could do is as the character's taking step two or step three, then the daughter runs up the steps behind them. Oh, no, 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 don't go up there yet by yourself. Right. And it's like, oh, now the game has changed. It's heightened because because kid went up steps, yeah, right before adult, and and so anyway, uh, again, this is not my genre, and I'm not going to pretend I know what I'm talking about. All I'm saying is, for me, step number five isn't more tense than step number one. So, um, so three stars for The Conjuring Two, which brings us to The Conjuring: The Devil Made Me Do It. Residents of Brookfield were shocked this afternoon by the broad daylight murder of Bruno Sauls. The court accepts the existence of God every time a witness swears to tell the truth. 
I think it's about time they accept the existence of the devil. Whatever was going on, whatever happened that day, that was not Arnie. That is from the trailer. For The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, the latest and... I was going to say the latest and greatest, that's to be determined, film and conjuring universe. Uh, this is available in theaters and on HBO Max for the next 30 days. And Dustin, yep. you saw it. I did see it. Is I watched this, it on HBO Max. Is this a three star as well? This is a two star. Oh, um, no. Step down. So, so I'll tell you why I watched this. It's because the trailer was effective. I don't know how. I think the trailer just popped up as like an ad on YouTube. And and I sat and watched it because I'm like, I've never seen these movies. And then I was like, oh, that's so cool. But I need to see the other two first. So I started this binge. Wow. But here's the deal. Um, what I liked about the trailer was the courtroom aspect of it. I yeah. like the idea of, okay, I committed a murder. And I was possessed by the devil or by a demon when I did it. That's my case. This is mm -hmm. a real case. You can yeah. look this up. Yeah. Um, that was the plea. And um, I, 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 I plead not guilty by demonic possession. Like that's my, that's my, my plea. Um, and, and so to me, that's interesting. Um, so I was like, I'm all in on the courtroom stuff. That's what I want to see. Um, unfortunately, the entire courtroom stuff is in the trailer. It's like 60 seconds. Oh, um, no. So disappointment. Oh, that's disappointment. Number one, disappointment number two. I really like that line. Hey, it's about time. Like every time the, somebody says, swears to tell the truth, the court accepts the existence of God. It's time they accept the existence of the devil. Mm -hmm. That makes me think, oh, this is about court. It ain't about court. People, it ain't about court. That line is said in the film, yep. but it ain't about court, people. Oh. Um, so, um, so uh, clever marketing, but misleading. Damn um, it. And uh, so, so, yeah. Um, but why don't I give it two stars? So, first of all, this is not directed by James Wan, although James Wan is a credited writer on the film. Um, it is directed by Michael Chavez, who just directed The Curse of La La Rona, which is a Conjuring spinoff film. So, uh, they tapped him to direct this. Um, it does bring back Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson. Um, they do a great job in this film, um, as always. Uh, they, it, the film is a little bit later. Like, there's a few, I, I don't know when Conjuring 2 takes place. Versus this one, um, but they they purposefully make Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson aged a little more in this film. Um, and one of the um, stronger points of the film is that Patrick Wilson that that Ed Warren is having some heart issues. Um, this this is a great concept. Um, unfortunately, it, it never amounts to anything beyond like, "Hey, did you take your medicine?" <laughs> that's about it um and so there's like one scene where he runs and he gets like super duper sweaty and but i'm like okay so this is where he like passes out or you know almost dies or yeah he's fine and i'm like yeah so you're not making use of your own concept um which as a writer is frustrating um but i will say I don't know. I, I do really like this story and I really like the the family that's being affected by this thing. Yeah. Um, it, it's a great story. So the story is um, a, a young boy named David has been possessed. This is like the beginning of the film, how it always starts with the previous thing. So David has been possessed um, and he um, is like this really creepy you know, whatever, uh, possessed little boy. And he's doing like exorcist stuff, like, you know, turning, turning his neck around and like all, all that stuff from like the exorcist. <laughs> uh, and, um, and it's like really big shock value, um, uh, William Friedkin level stuff, yeah. um, which has not really been in the conjuring thus far. Right. So immediately I'm like, Oh, this does feel different. Um, and, and then the story goes, David, um, is being possessed. The exorcism is not working. And so, um, David's sister, her boyfriend, um, in an effort to save David says to the demon, come, come into me, leave him alone, but come into me. Whoa. And, and so the demon comes into Arnie. And, and so that's the, that's the story. Um, and then, the, and then, you know, everything that happens after that. So I love this story. Yeah. Great story, really captivating. Um, unfortunately, 
it it kind of loses a little bit of what the conjuring is um because it becomes less about the demonic possession and more of like a traditional investigation who done it yeah. and it's really strange um uh it, it's just it's just a little bit different um i think I think I'm, I think I'm done with the franchise. Like if they do conjuring four with Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson, I don't know where you go with them as characters. And after three films, I'm realizing that they are, they are stagnant as characters. Yeah. They aren't, they aren't on an arc and learning new things and progressing as people. It's not like their relationship has been tested or there's some flaw that they have that they have to overcome. They're just perfect investigative people with a perfect relationship who support and trust one another. And that's great. But it does mean that after three films with really no arc for them beyond like, well, we got to survive this one. It, it, it's kind of getting stale. And that's where I was with something like The Walking Dead, where the characters never got an arc. They just had to survive. And, and, and so when, when that happens, I started to tune out because I'm like, look, I know that Ed and Lorraine Warren are real people. Yeah. They were real people. So you can't really go too far with it and like, you know, whatever. But there has to be some hook for me, like that, that makes me want to know what happens next to them. And there's not that because there is no burning question for them. Um, so, um, at, on a character level, I'm, I'm less involved, uh, than I ever have been. And, um, but I love the story of the family that's affected by this. So, um, it, it's kind of in a weird way pulled down by Ed and Lorraine Warren here. Um, but, uh, good performances as always. And, um, and I think the reason that it's two stars again is just because it's, it's different for the conjuring. It's, uh, not, I always ha hate to say like, it's not what I wanted it to be, mm -hmm. but it's not what I wanted it to be. Yeah. I, I, I really, really was captivated by the story of little David who is, possessed and then Arnie who takes the demon for David um, and then, you know, commits this murder that he has no recollection of. Like, that's a great story. And then the legal battle. And that's a great story. And it, it gets completely squashed by, will Ed and Lorraine Warren survive this one? And um, and and it, it just kind of lost what was interesting to me in this film. So uh, that's not to say they can't pull me back, but there is nothing here that makes me really, really want to know what happens to Ed and Lorraine Warren next. So um, I think eventually, I don't know if Lorraine Warren's still alive, but I know Ed, Ed Warren has passed away. I don't know. Maybe they eventually she, get there. She she, she died in, uh, in 2019. She? Yeah. Okay. Got it. So, so maybe they eventually get there and I, I don't know when he died, but you know, where she's a widow and, and then you do have like a character thing for her to do, but but I, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what you do because then you lose Patrick Wilson and you lose the, like, I just don't know where you go with them as characters. So I think that's what I wish we had. And when I, when I sit and compare it against something like uh, a quiet place part two, where I really love all of these characters and want them all, like I'm rooting for all of them. I want them all to live their best life. Um, I, I don't have the same level of passion for any of these characters. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's a mixed bag, but, um, I will say, you know, this film just kind of lost what I thought was the most interesting part of it. Um, the direction by Michael Chavez is, less interesting than that of James Wan. Um, and that's not to say James Wan is like a mastermind, but this, this was his baby. And like he, he developed a style that worked really well for these films. And like I said, he, I, I, I enjoy his style. Um, it's just that like storytelling, that momentum, that increase in stakes that I think it was missing, but his direction I've always enjoyed. So not having it here was, was, sad um so yeah um i do want to point out john noble is in this film um who you would know as lord denethor from uh, oh yeah the lord of the rings oh or, that guy's or, creepy or, or from fringe like i don't know yeah. if you ever saw fringe oh that's um, oh wow 
Yeah. Wow. And and uh, and that dude is so creepy. He's man. the creepiest guy alive. He's the creepiest man. That's I. I still have the image in my head of him as Lord Denethor, like while Pippin is singing to him, and he's like crunching on tomatoes and stuff, like the blood, like the the. It's like intercut with the tomato with juice. The battle. Is yeah. Messiest eater in the world. Whenever I'm somewhere and people are smacking or like scarfing down food, I just. That's what you think I of. Associated with Denethor. With, with Denethor, yeah. just yeah, <laughs> just like just, just biting into a cherry tomato, a thing yeah. bursts all over his chin. And he's like, you know, yeah. I'm going to throw the other half away and just toss it yeah. aside, like yeah. he, like he's eating uh, yeah. crawfish or something. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> nah, I'm done with that tomato, uh, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna napkin this thing up either. No, uh, no, no. But but yeah, he's so creepy, Somebody man. Wipe and me. like, yeah. <laughs> Hobbit, sing to me. <laughs> Elf, wipe me, uh, wipe me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, no, he'd be like Faram- Faramir, your brother Boromir, whom I love. Uh, he will never wipe me, but Faramir, I need you to wipe me. I need you to wipe me. Uh, I need you to wipe me. Gra- grab a Kleenex. <laughs> Put some aloe on it this time. Uh, um, so yeah, man, D- uh, John Noble's creepy, and mm. uh, I-, I love that man. He should also be in everything. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know. Two stars. Uh, in the end, would I recommend any of these films to anybody? <sighs> no, I don't think I would. <laughs> like, it, it, I, I think I think if you are inherently interested, then go for it. But if, sure. if I'm not gonna I'm not gonna persuade you to have interest in this film. But if you were on the um, fence about seeing the others, like maybe I was. Like I've seen the first. Yeah. You know, should I continue? It's just like if if they don't if if the characters don't progress and the filmmaking doesn't yeah. become more inventive, it's yeah. like. I mean, yeah. I'm not interested, you know. I, I, I would say the second one is as good, if not marginally better than the first. So if you found yourself enjoying the first, the second's not a bad watch. But but the third is doesn't feel like a conjuring movie to me. It feels like a detective movie that, you know, whatever. So um yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not going to persuade you. Now, if you came to me and said like, yeah, I just have no interest in Lord of the Rings. I'd be like, sit down and let me tell you why it's great. Sure. Uh, but like with The Conjuring, if you're like, I just have no interest, I'd be like, oh, yeah, That's I was cool. there. Yeah. I was there a few weeks ago. I had no interest. I, I, I only had interest because I thought it was going to evolve into a courtroom drama and <laughs> and it didn't. So, yeah, whatever. I thought we were going to get 12 angry men, but it was going to be 12 angry demons. 12 angry and <laughs> <laughs> they're all arguing over who to possess and yes. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It just, it wasn't what, what I thought it would be. So I, I, I don't know. Anyway, don't know. it's a bust. <laughs> It's a bust, but, uh, but look, I, I'm not going to go with any of the spinoffs and I know that Ed and Lorraine Warren are in one of the spinoffs. I ain't watching it. I'm not no. watching it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so w- w- ask me again when conjuring four comes out, sure. devil made me do it again. No. Then I'll, then, then I'll, um, I'll, I'll tell you if I'm interested in proceeding, but as of now, no. Oops, baby. The devil made me do it again. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he, he 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 took my heart, <laughs> literally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Um, with that, uh, we'll, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get out of here. Um, all right. Thanks everybody for listening. See you all later. Good night. Good night. Sleep time. Ooh. All right, Don't let run. the Babadook bite. The Babadook. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>